Ahoy Vashikni. If you're new to this channel, I'm Jen, an American expat who's lived in Prague, Czechia for the last nine years. And I recently returned from my first trip back to California since before the pandemic. And there were a lot of what I would call reverse culture shocks. And I talk a lot about them in this video I did with my husband. So be sure to check that out after you watch this video. But when I was back in California in my old familiar surroundings, I realized that I'd forgotten a lot of the ways that life is different in California than here in Prague. And that's what I wanna share with you today. The first thing that greeted me when I arrived in LAX International Terminal was the American flag. And there's nothing really odd about that. But then I started to see the American flag everywhere. And I forgot just how patriotic Americans are. So Czechs don't wave the Czech flag or hang the Czech flag unless it's um, a national holiday or unless they're playing some international sports. Americans love to prove their patriotism to anyone who might walk past their house and are probably also American. In fact, Americans will stick their flag on pretty much anything. It's like a contest to prove who is more patriotic. I think that guy wins. Farmers markets in California are a veggie lover's dream. Now, I love the, the farmers markets in Prague, but you're gonna find the same produce that you can find in the supermarket. Onions, root vegetables, tomatoes, something green. It's just limited to what grows in this climate, but in California, pretty much everything grows. Just the variety of tomatoes you can find in a California farmer's market makes you wonder why you ever eat anything else. I thought Europe had cornered the market on flavored water, but Americans have become obsessed with flavored bubbly water. And they come in just tons of really odd flavors. There's coffee and cucumber and coconut. And there's this brand that everybody's totally obsessed with. And it's, it's kind of weird. It's not like sweet flavored water. It's like they took a raspberry and sucked out its essence and threw away the sweetness and then put that in the water. And they sell them in these little tiny aluminum cans, which are basically like a sip and a half. I think Americans like the small cans because it makes their hands look bigger. I forgot how dry California is. I'm talking like desert. And we've been in a decades long drought, which is why it was really surprising to see many people using their sprinklers to keep their lawns green. I remember when I was a kid, we used to have to take shorter showers to preserve water and now it just feels like people are giving up and just sucking as much water as they need. Contrast this with the beautifully green landscapes I flew over when I was leaving Prague and doing my layover in Munich. It feels like California is landscape from Mars or something. And it just breaks my heart because California has become such a tinderbox that's basically ready to light on fire six months out of the year. I'd heard about tent cities growing in places in California, but I truly could not believe my eyes about the homeless people living in tents on the streets in very affluent areas. Now there's always been a sizable homeless population in California and with sun, you know, 350 days of the year, it's not a terrible place to live um, if you must live out on the streets but something has just broken. And the fact that they have rows and rows of tents living near houses that are on average over $750,000 each, it reminded me of when I went to New Delhi in India and there would just be homeless people sleeping on the streets 
in front of large mansions that had security guards. In Prague, you, you just don't see the disparity between the haves and the have-nots. And it was, it was shocking to see in both Los Angeles and San Francisco. Take me out to California. As much as I love to brag about public transportation here in Prague, and it is fantastic, in Southern California, we also have a decent train that goes from Los Angeles to San Diego called the Surfliner. And during half of the ride, you basically have an ocean view the entire time, which is spectacular. And that's just something that we don't get here in the Czech Republic. The closest thing I'd say is the train to Dresden that goes up through Usti nad Labem, and there's a really nice river landscape there, but San Diego, Usti, I don't know, it's not exactly the same. San Diego is one of my favorite places. That's where I went to university, and I was reminded just how different university campuses are in the United States and here in the Czech Republic. I love San Diego so much because as stressful as Los Angeles and San Francisco can be, San Diego is a place where you just kick back and relax and not take things so seriously, which is pretty much how I lived my years in university. My campus, the University of California at San Diego, is massive. It's a three mile drive around the perimeter and we have everything that you could need on the campus. It's like its own little city. We had hospitals and bookstores and libraries and sports facilities and craft centers and dining halls, cafes, movie theaters, and we even had classrooms. In fact, we never even had to leave campus unless, of course, we wanted to walk across the street to the beach. In contrast, Charles University here in Prague is divided into faculties, and those faculties are in singular buildings that are located in different parts of the city and unconnected from each other. So when I went to the law faculty, we would not sort of meet people from the art or the medicine faculties. You just kind of stick with your group. And then when you leave the building, you're just out in a European capital and you have to act like an adult, just like all the people around you. Whereas the American university campus system really coddles you and you don't really have to act like an adult until you graduate. So I'm now currently in my college square, my quad, what we call it, and I'm looking at my dorm and my dorm actually from the window of the dorm you could see the ocean. That's how close we are to the ocean and everything seems really small here. I don't know why I wasn't like a, a very small person back then but everything here just felt bigger then. I personally loved the American University campus um, but I'd say it's for the less mature student while well, the more mature student um, would do really well at a place like Charles University. And of course, there's the difference in the age of the university. Charles University was founded in the 1300s and UC San Diego was founded in 1960, basically when I was born. Mexican food is to California what Vietnamese food is to Prague. And my personal favorite is fish tacos. I ordered fish tacos probably 10 times while I was in California. Good fresh fish is harder to find here in Prague. Um, and if you do find it, it's gonna be pretty expensive. Czech restaurants do a pretty good salmon and trout. We're not gonna talk about carp. We'll talk about carp at Christmas. So that reminds me, if you love fresh seafood as much as I do, and you're gonna be in Prague from September 13th to the 19th, you should definitely check out Prague Muscle Week. It's the one time of year when fresh mussels are delivered from the Netherlands in 18 hours to restaurant tables in Prague. 
And this year, over 70 restaurants are participating in the activities. So you can go to the website that I've listed in the description box, and when you buy a voucher for one portion, you get another portion for free, so you can invite the guest of your choice. Simply book the time and date you'd like to go out and eat some mussels, and you'll receive your voucher. I can't decide which restaurant to choose from, there are just so many good ones. I think I'm gonna pick La Bottega Gastronomica. That's a restaurant in Zhizhkov that I've always wanted to try, and this gives me the perfect opportunity. So if you're interested, check out the link and hopefully I'll see you out there. People in San Diego dress super casual. They're so casual that they wear sandals 350 days of the year, even without socks. We always wore these sandals called flip-flops, which I feel like Czech people would think are gym shower sandals. It's also really popular to wear your university sweatshirt for like the rest of your life. Americans have a ton of school spirit and we love to display it, much like we do with our flag. This is probably my third school sweatshirt and I will wear it until it unravels off my body and then I will buy another one and wear it for 10 years. I would proudly wear a Charles University sweatshirt if I could find where to buy one. Surfing was also an official school sport at my university. In the US, sports are a really important part of university life and all of the students attend the games. In fact, if you're really good at a sport, you can get your tuition paid for. I feel like I'm speaking words checks don't understand. Tuition is the very high amount of money that Americans pay to go to university. We pay to go to university. And if you're really talented at sports, you don't have to pay for your university. I mean, I didn't really think of this as strange until I came to Europe and realized Universities are mostly free, and your skills at sports has nothing to do with your academics. Here, if you're particularly talented in a sport, you might go to a club and actually be a full-time player. Or you can join a university team like the Charles University hockey team, but it's not such a money-making enterprise for the school. So this is also a strange thing to think about, that sports, particularly men's football and men's basketball, actually bring in a lot of money for their universities. The five most profitable college football teams in America brought in an average of $66 million in profit for their universities. And the players don't get paid any of that money. And that's probably why a UC football coach gets paid a lot more than a typical academic dean. Priorities. While we were in California, we got to experience some fancy new tech. And in San Francisco, we saw these weird cars everywhere with cameras on them. And we have those cars in Prague, but in Prague, those are just giving out parking tickets. And in San Francisco, those cars are teaching themselves how to be autonomous drivers. We tried a little bit of the autonomous driving in the Tesla. We're all gonna die. Oh God. Let's use the trash cans. Do you have your brake ready? Oh Look. Jesus Christ. No, Lou. Lou! <laughs> Why are you trying to kill us? Elon Musk is like yeah. stopping for traffic control. Now here's where it doesn't know what to do. It's well, like, then oh, maybe you should get shot. Or do I go? And let's just say I will not be getting into another self-driving car anytime soon. In San Francisco, we also went to the oldest Chinatown in the world, outside of China. I, I guess in China, they just call them towns. We have something similar in Prague. We have a Vietnamese market called Sapa, which is kind of amazing. You go in there and you just feel like you're in Vietnam. 
I would love to do a video about Sapa, but I kind of feel like I'm not allowed to take videos in there. If any of you have the inside scoop or Sapa connections and would like to do a video with me at Sapa, let me know. As much as I loved going back to California and being able to share a little of it with you, I'm very happy to be home in Prague. And don't forget, if you're interested in Prague Muscle Week, to check out the link below and maybe I'll see you out there. Tak, uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!